each year um, we have organized a series of briefings, usually around the time of the anniversary of the earthquake. Um, this time we're a little off of that anniversary, partly for logistical reasons, but I think also because we're kind of moving into a broader spectrum of issues beyond just uh, you know the reconstruction effort following the earthquake. It's been over five years now, and um, we're dealing with a lot of issues that have uh, endured in Haiti really for years and years. And so those are some of the things we're going to be discussing today. And this uh, particular briefing, this particular briefing is on um, Haiti's democracy and political situation. Uh, it's going to be focused quite a bit on um, the elections, I imagine, given, given our panel. Um, and I will introduce them before each of their interventions. Um, but uh, also a quick introduction of myself and my organization. So I'm Alex Main. I'm a policy analyst at the Center for Economic and Policy Research. And the name doesn't suggest that we work on Haiti, but we have done a lot of work on Haiti, particularly since uh, the earthquake. We do a lot around Haiti accountability. Um, and my colleague Jake Johnston is the lead author on our Haiti blog, Haiti Reconstruction, Haiti Relief and Reconstruction Watch blog um, that follows the aid effort, but also a lot of other issues, including the political developments in Haiti. And we've also, um, over the years, paid a lot of attention to the political situation, particularly elections. Um, and I just want to remind people, for those that weren't around or, or may not remember since it's now five years ago, but shortly after the earthquake, there were a lot of people saying it's very important um, to have a good, free, fair, transparent, um, and inclusive uh, elections um, following this earthquake, because Haiti, at this critical juncture, desperately, desperately needs uh, strong institutions, a uh, strong popular mandate in, in order to carry out this uh, huge reconstruction effort um, efficiently. Uh, so that was uh, the message that was coming from a lot of the international community. And what transpired was um, um, quite disappointing. Uh, everyone agreed that the worst thing would be having questionable elections with low participation, um, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, so the international community pushed for elections to take place really as soon as possible and they took place in a very difficult context where you had still a million and a half Haitians in um, camps um, and many more scattered around the country uh, making it difficult obviously for them to go to their usual voting centers. And um, you had an additional aggravating factor that began in October of 2010, which was a cholera epidemic. Uh, and at the time that this started, um, what authorities were telling the population was um, avoid congregating. So try avoiding to congregate in the middle of an um, election. You know, not the easiest thing. So, the first round of these elections, there was a very small turnout, um, less than 26%. There were a lot of irregularities, there were a lot of incidents. We're going to hear more about this on the panel. Um, and initially, nearly all of the presidential candidates on the day of the elections called for the cancellation of the elections and called for them to take place again. Um, and the first round results that came out initially had yeah, that's what I thought. It's okay. So the, the first round of the elections, um, you, you had two um, leading contenders, uh, Mirlan Manigat uh, for, for the presidency, Mirlan Manigat and um, Jules Serista. Um, and there was a bit of an uproar. You had the supporters of Michel Martelly, who came in third place in these elections, and took to the streets. Um, and then you also had, um, concurrently, the U.S. Embassy putting out statements about possible fraud, 
um, and more and more pressure being put on the CEP to change the results. And we're going to hear more about that from um, one of our panelists. But ultimately, that's what happened. Under a huge amount of pressure, the results were changed, but it was very evident that the international community had intervened heavily and forced the change of results. And that had a huge impact on how these elections were perceived by the population. So, um, and it's something that we've worked a lot at on at CEPR. There's um, actually a paper of ours that's just outside um, that looks at the Organization of American States uh, Expert Commission, uh, which formed a um, did an investigation recommending a change in the results, and we show how that recommendation was actually a very arbitrary one and politically motivated. So fast forward to, to, to today, we have a situation where the elections are more than three years delayed. Um, you've had a lot of protests recently. You had the Prime Minister last year who um, was forced to resign. Uh, and um, you now have a parliament that can no longer function because uh, they, the terms have ran, ran out, um, and so they don't have a quorum in order to function, and you have the government ruling by decree. Um, so it seems at the same time that elections may finally be on track. Uh, and so I think kind of the global questions I want to ask the panelists here, and I think they can give us some very insightful answers to them, is um, will the next elections, will they be the elections that Haiti needs and deserves? And if, then what needs to happen for Haiti to have the elections it needs and deserves? And finally, um, what else can the international community do or shouldn't do to help strengthen Haiti's democracy and government? So, Two questions. Okay, I'm going to repeat the questions for Jeanette. Um, what needs to happen for Haiti to have the elections that it needs and deserves? And what else can the international community do or shouldn't do to help strengthen Haiti's democracy and government? So first, today we're going to be hearing from Jeanette Cherubin who is an architect and poet, among many other things, uh, and, and a very active feminist um, in Haiti, based in port au -Prince. She was the Minister of Women's Affairs from 1996 to 1997, and she was a member of two of Haiti's provisional electoral councils between 2007 and 2011. She wrote her book about the experience at the um, at the CEP, the Provisional Electoral Council. It's this one. It's called Le Vortre Pourri de la Bête, uh, which means the rotten belly of the beast. So that gives you an idea of the tenor of her book. And um, it was just recently published in 2013 by the State University of Haiti. So I think Jeanette is probably going to tell us about her experience in some short words and, and the lessons um, from that experience that she had as a member of Haiti's electoral authority. So, can, I, can everyone hear Jeanette? I, I, I Hello, you hear me? Bonjour, good morning. Je tiens à saluer toute l'assistance ici présente. I greet everyone here. Et je remercie le HAUG de m'avoir invité à participer à ce panel. Mes remerciements à Alex d'avoir allé Seigneur Maître. And I would especially like to thank Alexander Maître. Que j'ai rencontré sur l'internet. We met one another on the internet. Au moment du scandale. At the moment, at the time of the scandal. De les de for the um, when the research was when the investigation was being done on the state of power. By the OAS. Qui loin de de respecter le mandat qui leur avait été attribué. It was very far from respecting the mandate that they had been given. Ils ont cuisiné les résultats des élections. They cooked the results that came out of the Haitian elections. Et c'est à ce moment que mes échanges ont commencé avec Alex. And that's when my with Alex uh, pour répondre aux questions d'Alex, 
Alex, in answer to the question that Alex asked, il faut quand même euh, se baser sur certaines expériences vécues à Haïti. Let's look at the uh, base in the experience of the people in Haiti. Et notamment dans le cadre des dernières élections. And especially within the experience of the last election. Alors je veux préciser que j'ai été désigné comme membre du CEP, qui est le Conseil électoral provisoire, par les associations de femmes. Par les associations de femmes. It, I must uh, be clear about this, that I was uh, put into this CEP, the Election Commission, by the Women's Associations of Haiti. La Constitution haïtienne prévoyait un seul Conseil électoral provisoire après 1996. Après le départ de Duvalier. After Duvalier left, there was one provisional council for the elections. So after Duvalier left, the Constitution of Haiti only planned for one provisional electoral council. La, la constitution qui a été votée en 1987. Ça ne va pas dans la constitution de constitution that was voted in in 87. Mais jusqu'à maintenant, ça fait comme une, une trentaine d'années après, on est toujours au conseil électoral provisoire. But even until this day, we are still in the situation of having a provisional electoral council. Et à chaque fois, il faut un consensus entre l'exécutif le, et les partis politiques. And every time we have to find a consensus between the executive and the political parties. Pour trouver euh, une formule de mise en place du CEP. So that we can have the right formula to put into place the CEP, the Provisional Electoral Council. On revient là dessus après, mais tout ceci montre déjà la cause d'une instabilité dans l'institution. But those kind of things will help you to understand the reasons for the instability of the situation. Et quand je suis arrivé au CEP, le consensus était que plusieurs associations, les partis politiques et d'autres secteurs de la société désignent des, des membres. When I came into the situation, there was a consensus that the political parties and the others were each going to designate their members. Et c'est ainsi que j'ai été désigné par les associations de femmes. And that's why I came to be designated by the women's organizations. J'ai publié un livre, Le ventre pourri de la bête. And I published a, lead, a book called the uh, Le ventre pourri de la bête, okay. the rotten belly of the beast. <laughs> Parce que, en dépit de mon expérience, mon pas, lors de mon passage au CEP, j'ai découvert des, des réalités inattendues à l'entier. And I based oh, this book in point. my experience because when I got into this organization, the CEP, I found things that were not expected and that were really out of the ordinary. Mais, mais ces faits qui sont euh, très étonnants, très frappants, but these facts, very surprising, n'ont pas été relatés seulement à l'intérieur du CEP, mais dans la société haïtienne en général, et, et, et touchent également l'implication de la communauté internationale. So these were not just happening in the midst of the CEP, but also in the community, and also touched the international community. Donc le ventre pourri ne désigne pas ce qui se passe au CEP, mais ce qui se passe dans le contexte avec tous les acteurs, y compris l'international. So the, the, the belly that we're talking about is not just ha what happens within the CEP, but what happens in the whole context, including <coughs> the international community's involvement. Alors, le premier problème que j'ai relaté, c'est le non-respect de, de la périodicité constitutionnelle pour les élections. One of the things that I talk about in my book is the lack of respect for the, the timeliness of the work within the givens of the Constitution. Alex vient de dire que la Constitution qui se fait actuellement aurait dû se faire il y a trois ans. You know, Alex a already said that the Constitution, the elections that were done, what should have happened three years ago? Et euh, ce renvoi des élections. And the fact that these elections were postponed. Oui, ça se relève récurrent. Ça se, ça se répète à chaque fois. Has been happening again and again. Et nous pensons que dans dehors des causes structurelles, il y a aussi une, euh, euh, le facteur politique qui rentre en jeu. We think that there is Alors, des intérêts politiques. There are political interests that are also involved in making this uh, 
happening. Et ceux qui sont au pouvoir veulent rester au pouvoir. Those in power want to stay in power. Nous n'avons pas la tradition d'alternance politique. We don't have the tradition of alternating in our politics. Euh, donc, le, la conclusion est que ce renvoi de la périodicité cache cette réalité-là. So, we, our conclusion is this, uh, this uh, hesitation or, or this yeah, postponing of the period, the terms, brings about this problem. Maintenant, je voulais signaler quelques paradoxes qui existent dans le contexte général des élections. Let me mention some of the paradoxes that exist in this situation with the elections. Ces paradoxes ont été identifiés par Suzy Castor, qui est une historienne. These have been identified by C.B. Castor, who is a historian. Mais moi, je vais illustrer avec mon, mon vécu au sein de ce CEP. And I would like to illustrate these using my own experiences in the midst of the CEP. Le premier paradoxe, c'est qu'on a un état faible, mais le gouvernement est omniprésent. One of these paradoxes is that we have a, a weak state, but the government is omnipresent. <coughs> Donc, l'État et les institutions sont en pleine déliquescence. En pleine déliquescence. Oui, c'est... OK, the, the state and the institutions are falling apart. Et, par contre, l'exécutif et, et les élus, ils sont très impliqués. But the president and the people who are elected, the elected officials, are very implicated, very present. Pendant mon passage au CEP, je n'ai pas relaté d'injonction du président de la République au Conseil électoral. When I was in the CEP, I did not relay an injunction from the president to the work of the electoral commission. Mais la présidence possède un ensemble de leviers qui peuvent forcer le CEP à agir dans un sens ou dans un autre. But the president has a certain number of levers or um, pressure points to influence the work of the CEP. Par exemple, le déblocage des fonds peut prendre du temps, selon que l'action qui va se poser est dans l'intérêt ou non de l'État. So, for example, releasing the monies that are needed could take time, depending on whether the presidency is in favor or not of the, the action that the CEP wants to take. Le, le nombre de postes à pouvoir est à cause de, du décalage des élections, il arrive que les postes se superposent, c'est pas si compliqué. C'est-à-dire que si on veut faire seulement les élections législatives, il peut arriver que les élections législatives et les élections municipales se retrouvent ensemble à cause du décalage. Because of the different delays, sometimes it happens that the, the levels of, different levels of government have their elections coinciding or coming one on top of the other. For example, the municipal election time period can come at the same time as the national uh, representatives. C'est un autre levier pour le chef d'État, pour l'exécutif. Parce qu'il peut dire, selon ses intérêts, il n'a pas les moyens de faire toutes les élections. En même temps, il peut décider de faire seulement une élection. But this is another way that the government uses its leverage to bring power into the situation to say there are no, there's not enough means or not enough resources to do both elections at the same time. Nous allons à un deuxième paradoxe. Let's look at a second paradox. Le, la société est fragilisée, mais les élections sont coûteuses. The society is very fragile, but the elections cost a lot of money. Et de 4 millions de dollars tirés des fonds publics en 1990, à un million. Of the 400 million dollars taken out of the public funds in 1990, okay à 8 millions en 1995, 8, 8 million in 95, 29 millions en 2010, 29 million in 2010, et en 2014, les premières estimations allaient jusqu'à 34.6 millions. And in the estimation that we have for 2014 is 34,000. Uh, million. 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 <laughs> uh, les données accusent de 40 dollars par électeur haïtien, 40 dollars US par électeur haïtien, en comparaison avec le Brésil qui est à 2 dollars. The cost of election has been uh, calculated at 40 dollars for each uh, voter 
In comparison with Brazil, where it, it costs two dollars to run the elections per voter. Ce qui est tout à fait aberrant dans le pays le plus pauvre de l'hémisphère. This is apparent in the country that is the poorest one in the in the Western Hemisphere. Mon témoignage. My my testimony. C'est que um, il y a toujours une explication à tout. There's always an explanation for everything. Et pour le cas de, pour le cas des élections, le prix des élections. For the price of the elections, les raisons c'était que il fallait il faut moderniser. Well, the the explanation was well, we need to modernize. Euh, de, de manière à assurer une plus grande rigueur. So that there is a greater rigor. Et de rapidité également. And speed. Et et d'autres raisons. And others. Et mais, mais bon, je pense que la morale de l'histoire. The moral of the story. Oui, c'est qu'il y a un débat et un choix judicieux ne peut découler que de la considération des enjeux et le rapport aux objectifs bénéfiques pour le pays et le plus bon ordre. So that. Oui. C'est qu'il faut choisir en fonction. Choose between. En fonction des enjeux. The different um, factors. Oui. Et, et le rapport and the relationship between au bénéfice du pays du plus grand nombre the greater benefit to the country et pour garantir le triomphe de, du vote populaire and to guarantee the victory of the popular vote et ce deuxième paradoxe qui est fait au cours des élections the, de the second paradox in the course of these elections mène à mène à un autre corollaire comes to another corollary les élections nationales et la tutelle internationale the uh, national elections a la Tutelage. 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 So we already talked about um, four key factors of tutelage, electoral tutelage. Et le financement. Finance. Le recours à l'expertise internationale. The um, access to international expertise.